Hello everybody, Jonathan Kadish from Aquaponics NYC. I am here in my New York City apartment in the East Village and I am setting up my aquaponics system that you saw me build up in Vernon. If you haven't seen me build that, you should check out my other videos uh, to watch how I built the grow bed. So today we're going over the plumbing uh, for the entire system and we're going to get the pump plugged in, we're going to get the aeration set up we're just going to bring the whole thing to life today so uh, join me as we do that here is my finished grow bed I have stained the wood to look a little bit closer to walnut which is I, as you can see the door is, is uh, got a walnut veneer on it so I just wanted to match some of the other wood and you know at least close but not exact. Um, as you can see down there we have the structure that we built to support the weight. I've actually gotten up in the grow bed and stood on top of it uh, so I'm about 190 pounds so it can take the weight. Um, as you can see the rubber liner is on the inside and we folded it to uh, you know to to make it work without having to do the patching and all of those things and we put this railing on you know just to keep the rubber liner in place and it's also a nice decorative touch so we're going to put in all the plumbing uh, as you can see there we have our overflow hole and back over here we have our loop siphon hole so let's get to doing that plumbing Okay, let's start first with the overflow. The overflow goes through the bottom of the grow bed and it's just there in case the, uh, somehow the drain, the siphon, gets plugged up. So that will drain right directly into the fish tank. Over here we have the loop siphon um, and this has the bulkhead fitting which goes through the back of the grow bed. This is also a bulkhead fitting here. The loop siphon also has a shroud that will go over the drain part inside of the grow bed. So that will stop the roots from getting down and blocking the drain of the siphon. I'll be drilling a bunch of holes in that uh, to allow the water to come in. Here we have the water supply for the grow bed. I have three points where the water will be entering. Uh, I don't want a spray flow, you know, like high pressure flow. We want to keep the top of the grow bed dry. That then comes down off the back of the grow bed and it's actually going to be more like that. So that will come down at a 90 degree angle there. And that goes to a, um, a union here which I can quickly disconnect if I want to move the fish tank away from the uh, grow bed. And over here we have the pump. The pump will be pumping directly up into the grow bed, but there is also a, um, a ball valve here. The ball valve will be used to control the flow rate to the grow bed. Any excess that comes out goes back into the fish tank and actually helps aerate the fish tank. So that's it. I'll be plumbing that together with my trusty purple primer and glue, PVC cement. We'll have that put together and set up shortly. I am in my bathroom here getting ready to glue up some PVC. The reason I'm in the bathroom is because I have uh, decent ventilation here. So, I'm just going to do this and you can watch. So this is the purple primer. And that goes way around. So on the inside, and here we have PVC glue. Go around on the 
inside. Put it on and they say you're supposed to twist it. We'll get that to vertical. And that's where it's going to stay. That'll only take a few seconds to dry. So I'm all finished gluing it up. And there's the finished product. Of course you're looking at it upside down. It's late at night, Thanksgiving evening. And I've just come back from dinner with the family. So here we have the completed assembly. I've got my uh, supply water supply pipes that coming into the that come into the grow bed. And as you can see, those are coming from the fish tank down here. And there's the pump. So that pumps it up. And for this pipe, there's the union that we were talking about earlier. Comes right up and boom into the tank. I've uh, secured it here with these pieces of wire. Another piece. So I just put a piece on each section so that, you know, if somehow it gets jostled around, the water's not going to flow outside of the tank. So in, over here we have our loop siphon installed. There's the bulkhead fitting. And this is a PVC elbow that screws into the loop siphon. And that's just uh, slipped onto a slip fitting. Uh, I should say a barb fitting, which is screwed on to the PVC. And it gets reduced from one inch down to three quarters of an inch. So that's what this fitting does. Reduce from the one inch PVC to three quarter inch hose. And as you can see the hose comes down, loops around, and continues down into the tank. Kind of hard to see. It's a little bit tight here, but hey, this is Manhattan. You have to make things fit. So that just drains here to this hose here. Let's see if I can get it in the frame, right there. I just have another barb fitting on the end of that. I'm intending to put in, uh, I'm intending to put in another elbow on that and uh, I don't know, make it, make it so it's a lot quieter. Because you'll hear in a little bit, I'm going to run the system that is kind of loud. I've also put these uh, wire hangers here because we need to keep this going level all the way down, or at least we need to keep it always going downhill. If we have uh, an uphill part, then we'll get an air pocket that won't be able to start the siphon. So we need this continual downhill. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can see down there that's the ball valve and that just spits water back down into the system. Alright, I think it's time to fire this thing up. Over here I have a, a timer plugged in and uh, I'll probably have it set initially for one hour cycles but for right now let's just run it manually. Down here you see uh, my loop siphon feeder, so this is the drain that goes through loop siphon, through the wall there. And we'll let this fill up, and we'll check back when the siphon is activated. 
Okay, so you can see the water starting to pulse in there. I don't know why it pulses, but I think it's because the water is breaking the cohesion and starting to drain a little bit. Yep, you can see it draining just a little bit from the pulses. So that bubble that you see forming there gets pushed over the ledge. And it's starting to go just a little bit more. As this is going on, oh, there it goes. And boom. The siphon is starting. I have that just going upside the side of the glass as it's quieter. Add some aeration. As you can see, the water level gets kind of low. That won't be so good for the fish if it was like that, but when I add hydrogen to the grow bed, it should rectify that. So you can see the height that the water line got to, which is four inches. Uh, about you know four inches below the top. Now, if I go over here, let me grab the ruler, and I look at the top of this. We're talking four and a half inches. So there's a half inch difference between the water level and the top in the top here of the loop siphon. And I assume, I don't know this scientifically, but I'm assuming that has to do with pressure. So we're reaching the level where the loop siphon should break. The water comes down. It'll start to suck up the air. You see I perforated the pipe as well. And if you look closely here, you can see there's little vortexes around those holes where the water's getting sucked in. And soon they'll be sucking here. And you can see the air starting to flow through the pipe. And you notice the loop, the loop siphon isn't stopping quickly. It's kind of drawing a lot of air and refilling with more water. So even this level of pumping water will have the loop siphon continue. So ideally my flow should be a little lower. But the way that I'm going to deal with that, if I wanted to constantly run the pumps, then I would have to reduce the flow. But I'm probably just running it on that timer over there. So I'll have it so the pump shut off. The loop siphon still isn't broken. So I'll just go over here and sh shut off the pump. And you'll see that that siphon breaks pretty quickly. So, like I said, we can adjust the how much water is pumping into the system, or we can just shut off the timer. I'm happy shutting off my pump on a timer because that saves power. That pump is 25 watts, um, so. You know, over the long run, that's going to save a lot of money to turn off the pump on regular intervals. And my, what I've timed it out to be is have the pump on for nine minutes, and by that time the siphon's almost drained, and then shut it off. So here we have the completed system, and the location it's going to be, right next to my desk. 
As you can see here, I put in uh, the shroud, which has holes drilled into the side of it. Hopefully this will stop the roots from growing in and getting to the drain. I put on some additional elbows here to reduce the, the sound of the running water. And here, back here, you see the loop siphon and the drain back into the tank. Here you see my quick connector. So if I ever want to move the fish tank out, I can just do that. And then I can pull my tank out pretty easily. Over here I have what's going to be my propagation area along with my cat, Dharma. Huh? So I'm going to be starting my seeds there. I have different kinds of seeds here. Different herbs and, and peppers and things that I've tried in the past just growing out on my windowsill. So next up will be uh, cycling the system. But first I want to encourage you just to go ahead and uh, try this yourself. Everything you see here was bought at Home Depot or Lowe's. All the plumbing supplies, all the wood, uh, the things that you have to get uh, online are the pond liner, the bulkhead fittings, and the pumps. But everything else is just your basic Home Depot, Home Depot or Lowe's affair. I found that Lowe's is better with the plumbing stuff. Uh, they keep a better stock. So that's about it. My next series of videos is going to be about a uh, cycling system and then I'm going to get into uh, starting seedlings and propagating. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, and join me on this adventure and I hope that you start your own system. I hope my videos have given you some insight on what it takes to build this um, and what it takes to get started in aquaponics. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, and uh, share it. Hey, share it with other people too. Alright, take care and see you soon.